Vital congregations invest in each other. They reach out and connect with and walk alongside our neighbors. And in our worship, we're gathered and sent, sent not just to go outside the building, but to go out and join God's creative and redeeming work in the world. Well, this last fall, our neighbors, especially those down east, found themselves devastated by hurricanes. Serving as the liaison for Lutheran disaster response here in the Synod of North Carolina, I have toured our eastern coast and I have seen God at work. Today, we want you to hear testimony of God at work in disaster relief. So I invite you to welcome to the stage Pastor Bill Milholland from Lutheran Church of the Resurre of Reconciliation in Wilmington. I want you right here. Okay. Pastor Milholland, will you share with everyone where you have seen God in the midst of the disaster and its sure. aftermath? Well, it's in a lot of places, obviously, but mostly it's in a lot of faces, uh, in the hearts and the lives of people working together to help put... Um, people's lives back together, people's homes back together, uh, congregations back together. Um, I often uh, get a little uh, uncomfortable when something uh, out of the ordinary occurs and they say, ah, that's a God moment. And uh, I, I, I don't necessarily try to attribute specific things to a God moment because I think God's got all moments in his hands. But I do know that um, seeing people who sacrifice their time, their energy, their resources to help put people's lives back together is a God moment. Uh, it is God's hands, or uh, God's work in our hands. Um, the generosity of a uh, synod that within 36 hours of uh, not really knowing what we were gonna be doing in terms of the damage and the restoration, getting a call from uh, my bishop, telling me that he has our back, the Senate has our back with resources and uh, support, uh, knowing that other congregations um, that, were, that really fared much uh, worse than ours did in terms of damage to the facility, uh, were rallying together to try to support us. Um, St. Paul's Lutheran in Wilmington uh, sent us a check from um, a congregation in Illinois. It was Illinois, wasn't it, Jonathan? Yeah. Illinois. Uh, they had uh, sent a check to St. Paul's, and St. Paul's Council voted to divide that among the con other congregations in our part of the world. Uh, so the generosity of neighboring congregations and the leadership there uh, certainly is part of God's work. Um, knowing that there were uh, folks who were without homes uh, and, or without uh, livable homes and yet taking time to go and assist other people um, because they were under uh, the same situation or maybe worse. Um, it just, you, 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 when you're in the midst of something like that, you, you don't really stop to think too often or, or I didn't stop to think too often about what was going on, but in retrospect and, and looking back, I realized it just continued day after day after day of people giving uh, of themselves. Um, when you call for um, resources to be gathered together, the outpouring of things, you know, sometimes when you, when you say you want to, to uh, have th things collected, you find that it's a good time for people to clean out their closets. Um, but that wasn't the case. Um, there wasn't a lot of junk uh, that was collected. It was, it was good stuff that was given so that people who didn't have uh, 
simple things to, to wear and to use could have them. Um, one situation occurred in north of us, up in Pender County, um, where uh, one neighborhood particularly was not in the floodplain and was not expected to have had much damage. Almost the entire neighborhood was wiped out with flooding up to the second floor. And so they caught a lot of people off guard. They did not expect to be dealing with the, with the problems. And so a great call went out for the people in, in that part of the state uh, to rally around these folks. And um, there was one young woman who uh, we got word, where can we take resources? The pro part of the problem was distribution. Where can we take things that would uh, uh, you know, uh, have the greatest impact? And there's one young woman uh, in a, on a back road um, that um, we got word was collecting things. And, and here's how it happened. During the storm, all around her, her neighbor's houses flooded, hers didn't. Her, uh, she had a, a tree to come down and one tree came down in front of her car, one tree came down behind her car, her car was unscratched. And so she said, I must have been spared for a reason. And so she literally opened her home to be a distribution center. I mean, her entire house became a distribution center for um, children and, and teachers and uh, coordinating with the school system about things that were needed and volunteers just crawling all over her yard, sorting through clothes and shoes, diapers, underwear, everything that was needed. And they would get lists of uh, needs for different students. And um, then they would, they would take an order and just, just put together a whole package uh, of things that could be given to a certain student so they would have clean underwear to be able to go to school uh, when the schools finally got back open. So it was just, it was things like that repeatedly over and over again uh, as how, how people were so compassionate to one another. Um, and the work still goes on. There are still folks who are not in their homes uh, there are still folks who are still trying to clean up. And even though a lot of the, the damage in terms of trees and that kind of stuff, all that's been cleared out, there's still a lot of homes that have, uh, are in need of repair, and people are still uh, giving of their time and energy uh, to help put those, those homes back together. But it's always, it's always the faces of people and the hands of people and the hearts of people uh, where God does uh, the greatest work. And so we thank you all for uh, what you did for us through your support um, and for your prayers. We, we did feel them very, very keenly. Uh, it was great support and great help for us to get through it all. So thank you. Thank you, Pastor Milholland, for sharing how God is so wonderful and the power that has been felt of the Holy Spirit that is overcoming even the forces of nature. The North Carolina Synod gave over $150,000 to congregations on the East Coast. God is truly at work in each of you. Bishop Tim noted that in March, Lutheran Disaster Response partnered with the North Carolina Synod to hold a retreat for those who were impacted by the hurricane. We asked both rostered leaders and lay leaders who were in the impacted area to come. Lutheran Disaster Relief continu Response continues to provide support through a, a partnership with Lutheran Services Carolinas. We are doing case management in all 28 counties along the eastern coast, and it's a phenomenal, phenomenal effort that's going on with uh, volunteer organizations after disaster, which are more than 100 different agencies and organizations that are continuing to work. There is something called a rule of 10 in disaster response, if you have an event that lasts one day, then the relief period, immediate uh, response will be 10 days, and then your recovery time will be 100 days. This storm lasted 21 days, times 28 counties. 
That's in excess of 160 man years to recover. So those of you who are here today who were affected by the storms in your congregations, in your personal lives, in your families, I would invite you to stand. We want to see you. We want to recognize you. We want you to know that we are with you still. Now, I know there are more than that, y'all. If you are standing near or sitting near someone who is standing, I would invite you to encircle them. Get up out of your chairs. I know we're Lutherans and we like to be still, but let's move. We're people of spirit. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters who are continuing this journey. Creator God, Lord of earth and air and water and fire and wind and rain, you came into this world as one of us and suffered as we do. We give you thanks for your presence in the midst of peril. We thank you for all who respond and become agents of recovery, healing, and renewal. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through these storms. Continue to embrace and comfort all who still walk through the rocky path of recovery. Hold close to all who continue to mourn and teach all of us to work with them and to walk beside them. Lord, empower us to embody the continued presence and protection of you, our Good Shepherd, and stir us up with your Holy Spirit to bring hope and help and comfort as we rebuild our communities through life-changing relationships. Use us to rebuild with hands that reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and live and teach the word we know. And through this healing, be communities of Jesus, living in justice and peace. We ask these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, all of you, for your generosity, for your support. And as we draw this time to a close, we as a synod also want to connect congregations by engaging ministry in and with and alongside our neighbors. And one way we want to do this is to facilitate you getting in connection with one another. We have established an inventory. You'll see on the slide. This inventory shares what your congregation is doing already. And it allows us to connect you to others doing the same thing. You can fill this out online, and tomorrow we're going to have two stations at our social justice and advocacy table, so you can come there and fill it out online. We'll have folks there who will help you. We do have some copies available uh, on paper for those of you that would prefer to do it that way. But the purpose of this is not just to fill it out and send it to the Senate office and get credit for it. It is so that we can help you know who is doing similar work so that we can be more faithful in walking together and working together and being the church in the world, communities of Jesus, life-giving relationships. Thank you. <laughs>